Hello, my name's Bev and I'm the author of the book Please Eat, A Mother's Struggle to Free Her Teenage Son from Anorexia, which describes our family's battle with the deadly eating disorder, anorexia nervosa, which my teenage son Ben developed back in 2009 when he was just 15 years old. I'm going to read two posts now from the 16th of April 2011 and the 20th of April 2011 and both of these demonstrate that even with the contract being rolled out things weren't perfect there were going to be glitches it's never going to be a straight line and the first post is the ups of it and how things were improving and the second post is the downs of it the glitches and um, there's actually another post which follows that on the 22nd of April which I'll probably read as well actually because because that kind of shows that the the downs thankfully were only a blip and also how we could uh, tweak and adapt the recovery contract to take this into account and try to continue the momentum forward towards recovery. So yeah, so we've got three posts here, quite short. The first one is from Saturday the 16th of April 2011 and it's called Our Second Fortnightly Weigh-In. As you know, we've changed the weekly weigh-ins to fortnightly so Ben doesn't become so obsessed with numbers. Interestingly, the last two weeks have been a virtual carbon copy of the previous two weeks, food-wise. If anything, Ben has eaten many more challenge foods like cake, chocolate, ice cream, chocolate brownies, etc. Last time, he put on nearly a kilo, but yesterday his weight was stable with no change. So that equals under one kilo across the whole month, around half the weight gain recommended by NICE the National Institute of Clinical Excellence. But never mind, as a result, we've made some adjustments to the contract. This weigh-in, of course, Ben didn't earn the monster points I awarded him for weight gain, but what we have done is adjusted the contract so he gets extra an extra point if he goes over his daily calories by 100 and two if he goes over by 200. Also, the result taught Ben quite a few lessons in that it's okay to eat all these challenge foods without ballooning out into a huge monster. In fact, on some days, he's eaten two challenge puddings, one after the other. He seems keen to try and up his calorie intake slightly to see what happens at the next weigh-in, which is now three weeks away, not two and I shall be strongly but gently encouraging this by careful use of the contract, which has now been running for four successful weeks. But I must go now to cook roasted Mediterranean vegetables in olive oil with feta cheese, served with large chicken breasts wrapped in pancetta, served with French bread and wine. That's the end of that post and the next post is from the 20th of April, a few days later, um, 20th of April 2011 and it's called Something is Up. I get the impression he's resisting calories again after agreeing to increase them at CAMS. Because he'd maintained over the last fortnight we agreed he'd go over the required calories as many times as possible. He went over calories on Saturday by 200, but hasn't done so on any other day since then, despite coaxing from me. And over the last 48 hours, he's been very tetchy. Today, he flew off the handle a couple of times and ended up in tears after shouting out a bit like he used to do, the kind of shouting that makes me jump out of my skin. He seems to be avoiding his friends. He's thinking of cancelling the outing with them tomorrow and he won't talk about it. I can always tell when he's not cooperating, but something is wrong because he closes up. The blinds go down and we're not permitted in. At times like this, thankfully few these days, it takes me back to darker times one year ago. It's halfway through the school Easter holidays at the moment. 
He's avoiding his friends, yet he's getting stir-crazy, trying to get us to go out and do things, when unfortunately we have to work. My husband is still officially out of work, but he's doing some freelancing, which he has to do to get money to pay the bills. Me, I'm having to work too, to keep the wolf from the door, hence the reason why I haven't written much of my blog this week. Echoes of last summer holidays, I start to dread this summer because if he's like this after one and a half weeks, what the heck is he going to be like after eight weeks of school holidays if he avoids his friends and doesn't take up all the other suggestions I'm always putting forward so he socialises with people his own age and doesn't get bored? most important of all, so he doesn't slip back into the hellish suicidal mood he was in for the whole of last summer. Hopefully this is just a blip, but at times like this, when the evil eating disorder is speaking loudly in his ear, it makes me feel so uneasy. I'm worried we're undoing much of the good we've done, but hopefully it's just a blip. And finally, the third post in this video from the 22nd of April 2011, two days later, and it's called a blip, thankfully, fingers crossed. Thankfully, it was only a blip the other day, and Ben is now back to his usual on the road to recovery self after deciding to talk about it in depth with me yesterday, which was good. And he managed to go over calories by an extra 200 yesterday. But I'd like to get him weighed when we go to CAMS on Wednesday afternoon to see how things are panning out. At the last CAMS session, he agreed to regularly go over calories, but in practice has only gone over three times since last Friday, which may mean his weight has maintained, in which case I will insist we formally increase the calories on the contract. I'm not going to let CAMS settle for vague promises from Ben, which they are prone to do and which he finds hard to keep. I think this is why we haven't come as far as I believe we should have come. For months we relied on Ben promising he'd do such and such, when in practice all the good intentions went straight out of the window the moment he left CAMS, resulting in 12 months where he weighed less at the end than he did at the start. OK, he's come on emotionally, but modern eating disorder research shows that weight gain must take a priority rather than being placed on a back burner until the patient feels ready to eat more. That kind of thinking went out with the arc, or that was the impression I was getting from all the research I was doing at the time. I'm not being negative, believe me, there has been a massive, enormous improvement over the past 12 months, but I believe the focus should have been placed equally as strongly on weight gain, and it wasn't, otherwise Ben's weight would be far higher than it is 13 months into Cam's treatment. This is why I'd rather Cam's didn't go down the Ben will do it when he's ready route any longer. And that's the end of that final post and it's the final post for April and at the next the next video I'll go into into May May 2011 I'll just add one thing major thing that was driving me at the time was the fear that the eating disorder would destroy Ben not not through his own intentions but but because we'd had two emergencies with his heart, not just one, but two, it had become clear that anorexia does affect the heart. After all, the heart is a muscle, and if the eating disorder is destroying other muscles in the body, um, then it's going to be eating away at the heart as well. And the low pulse rate, the dangerously low pulse weight rate Ben had been experienced is called bradycardia and it is now one of the known issues with an eating disorder. Um, it's one of the dangerous things and I was getting more and more aware of this and that was one of the reasons why I was so desperate to get the weight back onto Ben because I didn't want to go through that again. Um, 
we'd come out of the uh, two heart scares I didn't want to go into a third one and I didn't want the outcome to be worse than it had been the last two times which is pretty obvious so fear was one of the major things that was driving me to get Ben's weight back onto him um, which as a parent makes complete sense in another post I'll probably talk about um, research that was done some decades ago actually into the effects that starvation can have on the brain and the way the the brain changes and the person who is starving themselves or being starved starts to behave a bit a bit strangely to say the least it does change behaviors and that's another reason why it was important to me to get the weight back on so Ben became more rational and more able to embrace recovery so yeah that's that's the end of those three posts which um i was going to say provide food for thought sorry about the cliche i'll i'll see you in the next video which is in may 2011 you'll find a link below to my blog and you'll also find a link to my website where you can download free PDFs of my blog and also a link to Amazon where you can buy a copy of my book.